love so bad, there's more to life than being blue. We're full of piss and vigor, especially with our liquor, and just a teensy bit coo coo. We're usually feel so funny, our disposition sunny, we're making all the money too. Yahoo! At times we're simply frantic, or overly romantic, or just a smith satanic too. Everybody's got to love a manic, everybody's curious too. Everybody'd love to be a manic. I'm suggesting even why, oh you, yes you. Oh, you've got to know a manic. There's so many manics, like Alice's Rapid and Van Gogh. But funny Aristotle, Peter Pan and Plato, Sigmund Freud and Marilyn Monroe. We often wax poetic, we're excessively energetic. You think we're just so peripatetic too, it's true. We're pleasantly psychotic, not your usual neurotic. From Mr. Ross and multi orgasmic too. <laughs> oh, everybody's got to love a manic. Everybody's envious too. Everybody's true to be a manic. Come on, come on, come on, even you. We're known for reckless driving, occasionally not surviving, and spend all the money to hoo-hoo! And they said relentless, we're fearless and we're feckless, and infinitely greater than you, all of you! Our illness is systemic, increasingly pandemic, contagious like a rabbit viral flu, and yet it's not terrific, it's slightly parasitic, beware or it shall eat up all of you, yum yum! Where are we to lead up all of you? Oh, everybody's bound to, to love a manic. Oh, 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 yeah. Everybody's <laughs> got rested too. But everybody, everybody, and he died to be a manic. If they receive it all the chicken. Our flame is episodic. At times it's catastrophic. Mystical and metaphysical too. When we get to slapstick, making body happen, we'll end up in a straight jacket or two. You gotta love a manic, we're simply messianic, don't waste life being sad. Come and join our naughty party, play sex games and drink party, and celebrate going absolutely mad. What did they say? I said celebrate going absolutely mad. <coughs> so everybody better love a man, or else. Everybody's just as greedy too. Why everybody killed to be a man? I'll start by murdering you. I have the pan dance with me today. Neverland's always a holiday. But till you cry at my cabaret, eat till you die like a creme brulee. Manic, manic, got to be your manic. Spotlight on Shakespeare hanging from the railings. Welcome to the ward of the mentally insane. Once you enter purgatory, you won't be the same. You may think these bars provide a frame separating you from us who play this game. Knock, knock, guess what? It's an illusion. You're just as loony, but denying your delusion. Stay asleep, avoid the real confusion, or wake tomorrow and face your delusion. My name's Shakespeare. I'm your major d. I'll be your guide as you live this fantasy. When the magic's over, you'll be free to leave. But it will be up to you to see you from this way. Shakespeare reaches through the air as if to grab something invisible and throws the fairy dust out onto the audience. <laughs> Scene two, the main ward. A loud bell clangs announcing the time for morning medication. Nurse Stoneheart is lining the patients along the walls. She gives them their medication, injects their buttocks with syringes, checks under their tongues for hidden pills, and checks their heads for lice. <laughs> All right, you clowns. Line up. Open your mouth and pull down your pants. 
S T A T. Stat. <laughs> she calls out the names of the patients one by one as the medications and shots are delivered. Desire, Talula, Shakespeare. Shakespeare receives his pills, moves to the railing, and addresses the audience. It's eight o'clock in the morning when the nurses begin their patrol. They line you up like you're in jail, awaiting your parole. You cram your mouth with a fist of pills. They promise we'll make you whole, or shoot them into your sorry ass. Malcolm, ejecting him. Ouch! To take away your control. They say that when a bee stings. You, its guts fall out and it dies too. But most of all, where Medusa whispers, points to Stoneheart. Whatever happens, don't seduce her. If you dare stay in, there in her eye, you'll turn to stone. And this he did? Desiree stares at Stoneheart, freezes up and falls backward, only to be caught by Shakespeare, a cop. A man in his twenties with a Brooklyn or a Bronx accent marches down the aisle from the back of the theater, shoving Jay, a handsome man in his mid-twenties. Stoneheart unlocks the railing door and lets them both onto the ward. Jay is wrapped in a sheet, but otherwise naked. He is gaunt, shaking visibly from the cold and somewhat disoriented. Dr. Seamus is looking at medical charts in the nurse's station. Let me go! I didn't do anything! Hey, it's freezing. Can I have a blanket? Shut up or I'll give you something real to complain about. To Stoneheart. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Just found uh, this schoolgirl parading around in his birthday suit on Broadway in 42nd. No identification. Thinks he's an angel. Or something. Who, who's in charge? Tapping his head nervously with his fingers. Uh, I am. Uh, Dr. Jared Lockhart Seamus III. Is he... Dangerous? Uh, not yet, Doc, uh, but you never know with these uh, nutballs. The cop punches <laughs> Jay in the shoulder. Hey! Oh. Uh, that's why I handcuffed him, though he might be drunk or stoned. But I can't smell nothing on his breath. Anyhow, decided I'd have you check him out because he seems crazier than a fruitcake. <clears throat> that's fine. Uh, Stoneheart, uh, bring the patient into my office so I can <clears throat> examine him. Uh, leave on the cuffs and bring me 10 milligrams of intramuscular haldol. We'll keep him locked up on a 5150 just in case he's a danger to himself or others. Okay, Doc. Uh, so how do I get out of here? Under his breath. Honey, I mean, there ain't no way out of here. That's his head. <laughs> what was that? Uh, nothing, officer. Mumbles numbers. Okay, you said something? Two, two, two. <clears throat> uh, goodbye. Points to the exit, Stoneheart leads Jay over to she Seamus' office and shoves him into a chair. Sit down, cuckoo head. <laughs> Dr. Seamus, I'd like to discuss that you know what with you. Uh, Stoneheart, look what happened this morning to you know who. We can't use the damn thing again. Can't we get a new one? Sorry, doctor. You know, baby, I have to repair the one we have. Well, be quick about it. I've got more work to do. Stoneheart nods. When Jay isn't looking, Seamus takes a long syringe from the nurse and stabs Jay in the upper thigh. Hey, what was that for? Jay fights to get away until suddenly the medication starts to take effect and he slumps down into his chair. A little cocktail on the house to calm you down. Who are you and why are you naked? I don't know who I am or where I come from. I can't remember anything. It's so weird. I just woke up this morning in the middle of the street. My mind is totally blank. But somehow it's fine. I'm not scared. I actually feel safe. See, there's this powerful, I, I don't know what to call it, loving presence, God, I guess, surrounding me, moving through me. I can't see it, but I absolutely know it's here. And it's just as real, no, more real than you are right now. What does it mean? Did I die and go to heaven? He holds his handcuffed hands up to his face to feel himself. What am I talking about? I'm not dead. This certainly isn't heaven. <laughs> but, but it's all right. All of it. I should be terrified, but I feel ecstatic. Crazy, I know. Tap.
match the floor several times. Sure sounds like it to me. Jay suddenly raises his arms in the air, reaching to the sky, and talks in a deep, lower voice as if in a trance. Oh, my people, they must have faith in me. I am here for them. In his normal voice. See what I mean? Did you hear it? Speaking right through me, like God, right out of the Bible, talking to Moses. Afraid not. You seem to be the chosen one. So tell me, are you hearing this voice, or, uh, or do you actually think you're God? Sometimes it talks to me, and sometimes it speaks through me like it did just now. I stop being a separate person and become one with it. I'm me, but I'm so much more than me. And then I feel this incredible love for everyone around me, and I know we're all connected. You, me, the people on the street, even the cop, all part of this one breathing, miraculous life force. And, yeah, and right. Whatever. So you do think you're God. Feels pretty manic to me. Can you walk on water? Raise the dead? Read people's minds? No, I'm not God. We all are. The feeling's so hard to put into words. What is it exactly? Well, it sounds like the grandiosity and, and euphoria. I think a little lithium could cure. Doctor, I don't need a cure. I've never felt better. How can I explain it? I know what it is. Yeah, that's it. Grace. I never thought about what that word meant before. I'm not really sure, but I think I... I may actually be an angel. Ah, 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 just what I need, an angel. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Angels, we, we all need angels. Uh, so where are your wings? Wings? I don't know. Hey, would you mind taking these handcuffs off? They're hurting me and it's really cold. Can we turn on the heat? It's an extra charge for that above you. What was that? Nothing, nothing. So, so you say you hear this voice. Uh, is it telling you to harm anyone or kill yourself? Of course not. Like I said, it's a loving voice, not a harmful one. That's the whole point. He raises up his arms again and speaks in a deep voice to Seamus. You, doctor, are in deep trouble. Save thyself. Oh, your voice, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, uh, so you're saying you don't remember anything that led up to this scene on Broadway? Uh, any drugs? A head injury? Alcohol? No. And nothing hurts except my wrist from these cuffs. How do you tap your head, Doctor? Oh, why are you so nosy? Look, tell your voice you're crazy because anyone your age who still believes in God has a psychotic core. But you've come at the perfect time. We're about to start our group therapy session. Therapy? I don't need any therapy. He raises his arms and speaks in a deep voice. I shall minister to my people on this ward. There is a lot of suffering here. The world is in terrible danger. Danger? What are you talking about? I'm not sure. Well, thanks for the news update. Oh, okay, Mr. Angel. See you in group. You can discuss Armageddon there with the other crazies. <laughs> Seamus motions to Stoneheart to escort Jay out of his office. When will you be needing the you-know-what again, Doctor? Silence, you idiot! No more talking for the patient. Stoneheart nods, and she and Jay exit. Seamus slams the door and looks around apprehensively to make sure he's alone. Mumbling numbers, he removes a key from his pocket, unlocks his desk drawer, and pulls out a stash of cocaine. He quickly snorts some of the drug, sinks back into his chair, and sighs deeply, looking exhausted. <sighs> Jesus. Only Monday morning. How am I going to get through the rest of my life? He peeks off <laughs> a human skull 
on his desk, stares <laughs> at it, then lies down on the analyst couch with the skull behind him. What are you glaring at, Dr. Freud? Didn't like the way I dealt with the cuckoo, hmm? Well, how the hell am I supposed to psychoanalyze a Looney Tunes like that? Give me a healthy neurotic for a change, and I'll make you proud of me. So much for my Phi Beta Kappa and Summa Cum Laude Awards. Training at the New York Psychoanalytic Institute. What a goddamn waste of an education, rotting in this nut house. All Magdalene's fault. He notices a letter on his desk gets off the couch and nonchalantly picks up a letter opener to open it. As he is reading the letter and holding the opener, the instrumental waltz from In the Light of the Moon begins playing in the background. A shadowy figure of Madeline, an attractive woman in her 20s, enters the office, dancing by herself. As the music starts to play a second time, Seamus begins to sing. And he really moves to dance with her. The chorus of dancers drawing in the waltz. I saw the tear that got away unmasking all your lies. In the light of the moon, on that chilling autumn day, I knew that you loved someone else, that I had been betrayed. Well, Madeline is dancing her shadow lovers. Made yesterday could not be kept Vengeful hearts don't ever bend, smoldering scars of sorrow. In the light of the moon, in that dingy cabaret, as we said goodbye, my dreams all died, like the old cliché. Promises made yesterday could not be kept Vengeful hearts don't ever mend, they just leave you alone. As the instrumental Vengeful music repeats, don't ever mend, they just leave you alone. Seamus moves over to the male lover and starts to stab him with a letter opener in the back in slow motion. Madeline stands away watching with no affect. There is a surreal quality to the act with no blood and no sounds emanating from the characters. The male collapses on the floor as Seamus continues to stab him and the lights dim. Seamus' office. Spotlight on Seamus, stabbing the empty air. Suddenly he awakens from a deep trance, notices what he's doing, and abruptly tosses the letter opener onto the floor. He clears his throat nervously, he gets up, taps his foot, nervously collects himself, glances at his watch, and moves rapidly out of the office. Group therapy office. Seamus joins Shakespeare, Malcolm, Desiree, and Tallulah, who are seated in folding chairs, forming a semicircle facing the audience. Jay enters after Seamus. He is now dressed in simple pants and a sweater. So, people, who'd like to start today's group therapy session? I struggled for a lifetime looking for a cure, anything to... Uh, Tallulah, Tallulah, Tallulah. It's always Tallulah. How about you, Desiree? You've already been here a week and we have a repeat from you. Staring at the ground with a sullen look on her face, she mumbles inaudibly. Mm. Uh, what, what was that? Nothing, it's not important. <laughs> Raising his arm to the sky and speaking the divine voice to Desiree. You are important to me, my child. You don't understand. It don't matter. It seems like something mattered a great deal, Desiree. Maybe you could tell us about the overdose with alcohol and pills. The mumbles inaudibly again. <sighs> You're going to have to talk louder. I wouldn't know where to begin. I'd like to know why you're so miserable. Then I'd have to go back to the beginning of time. 
I've always been miserable. I'm just a lonely, empty person that nobody loves. I don't believe it. I bet you've had lots of boyfriends. You're wrong. I've never had any, not a real boyfriend anyway. Real men are too scary. It's too horrible. Looks agitated, but then turns her attention inside as if contact contacting something invisible. Making a wistful face, she sighs and begins to sing, In My Dreams. I feel you there, walking by me in my dreams. I know you're near, even closer than it seems. You are the one who follows me each night. You are the one who turns the dark to light. I feel your touch in me, even though I Stoneheart rushes to Jay's side and forcibly restrains him as 